Hello Floss Tube. this is Michelle at the Striped Rose and today is Wednesday, May the 1st. So happy Stitch Mania to everybody that is doing Stitch Mania. This podcast will mostly be about Stitch Mania, which I have started. But first of all, I wanted to show you some older finishes and some recent finishes. Um, I was, when I'm watching Floss Tube, people always talk about how they got interested in stitching and so I started thinking about how um, my stitching preferences have changed over the past 30 something years. Um, I think I've told you before that my mom taught us how to cross stitch when we were younger. I was probably nine or 10 or 11. Um, she said she taught us all three how to cross stitch so that um, we would have something to do so that she could cross stitch. So that was in the 80s. Um, and I must have cross-stitched some in junior high and high school. I know I did cross-stitch some, but I think I really took off in college. And I went to college 91 through 95, 1900. And I seem to have stitched a lot in 1993, which would have been right in the middle of college. And there was a big common room where, um, in the girls dorm that I was in where people would watch soap operas and Beverly Hills 90210 that's what I remember I didn't watch Beverly Hills 90210 sometimes I would come in and watch days of our lives because I had been watching days of our lives um, prenatally and uh, you know like every three or four years I would kind of pop in to see what was going on and and you could pretty much you know follow the plot um, of a soap opera if you just review. no ma'am no popping your claws if you just pop in every once in a every once in a couple of years but anyway so I did get a lot of stitching because there were other girls um, that would come in and cross stitch I mostly cross stitch sorority pieces um, and some fraternity crests um, but I also cross stitch some things that were um, my husband talks about two categories of my cross stitch there's goofy and then there's nice and I think um, the two that I want to show you from 1993 are pretty well in the goofy category um, this is the first one I wanted to show you um, this is not Cricut collection um, I don't know who this is um, just something that I found um, that makes that better or worse in my mom's stash um, it's Ada it's a really pretty um, sea foam Ada and it hung in the um, shower and toilet area that my sister and I shared and then um, at some point I put it in Mary Margaret's room and uh, her bathroom and I guess she's just really never noticed it but that was something I stitched in 1993 um, I also stitched from a kit a cow uh, that I gave to my mom I stitched it I guess for my mom to put in her kitchen and it still hangs in her kitchen it's unfriend I mean it's un there's no glass on it and I'm gonna put it in here a picture of it in here Um, so those were both on Ada. Then I also, in the same year, I said I stitched a lot of um, sorority pieces. And so I also stitched this. Um, this is on just white Ada. I'm sure that's 14 count Ada. Um, I love the shading in that rose. I will probably never mat cross stitch again um, but I love this mat it's like a marble um, mat um, and I think it's beautiful this I still have this hanging in my bedroom um, because the rose is absolutely beautiful um, so those are both on Ada so but I but I also stitched on even weave, 28 count even weave in 
1993 too because I have some other pieces that I worked on. So I don't know if I just grabbed whatever my mom had lying around, um, which would have been Ada or 28 Count Even Weave. Um, I don't seem to have had any, any rhyme or reason. Um, so the transition was that flower piece. I got married in 1997 and I you know, was wanted to decorate our home, and I found these, uh, they must have been needlepoint or tapestry floral pillows, and I, and they were like $40, and I really wanted them, but I, you know, we were newlyweds, I didn't want to pay $40 for a pillow, I, I still don't want to pay $40 for a pillow, so I thought, well, I'll just cross-stitch a floral pillow and put it on our couch. So, I um, found a floral design by the Lilac Studio, and if you remember the Lilac Studio, she did, she was a painter, and so she did very detailed floral cross stitches and used so many colors for the shading on her picture. She said like she would have used all the different shades of paint. Um, she used all the different shades of cross stitch. She, there was a wind anemone cross stitch of her pattern of hers in a cross stitch magazine in the 90s. Um, there were several just cross stitch ornament. She did an orchid, she did a rose. I can't remember if she did a poinsettia in the just cross stitch Christmas ornament editions. Um, but this was a, a trio of roses. And I'm sorry you're seeing everything on my table. This is on 35 or 36 count, probably 35 count because it's with two threads. And if you'll just look at all the shades, especially in the white rose, all the shades of pink and gray. Um, so I, I started this in 1997, I finished it in 1998. And again, that's two threads on 35 count, um, double matted. So needless to say, um, at some point I realized it wasn't gonna be a pillow, that it was gonna be a framed piece. And then of course, once it was a framed piece, it was much, <laughs> much more money than a $40 pillow. Um, but I still have it, it's behind glass, it's safe. Um, the dogs haven't destroyed it. The cats haven't destroyed it. Jerry doesn't take a nap on it. So it was a good deal. I, I got a good, I got good value out of that. Um, I still, so that is not my stitching style now. I don't like all the shading. I don't like to do all the back stitch. I do have several other patterns by Cindy Rice of Lilac Studio. I have a bunch of violets, um, a bouquet of lavender, I have four different rose charts. One of them is Rosamundi, the striped rose. And I still think I would like to do those one day just because even though that's not my preferred style of decorating or of stitching, they're breathtakingly, breathtakingly beautiful. I won't do two threads over 35 count ever again. So now my style, 10 years, no, 20 years, I guess 1998 was 21 years ago, not 11 years ago. Um, now my style has changed and it is most definitely reproduction samplers, not all of them, um, mostly ones that feature um, red houses, red and green, um, Scottish samplers, I still like Scottish samplers, but as for modern designers um, that aren't doing just repro reproduction. My favorite now is Blackbird Designs. And I'm sorry about all the reflection in the glass. I get, I've always gotten UV protection glass, but not museum glass. Um, so this is 2007, which was, I guess, about nine years after that last one. Um, and I pulled this one, so Blackbird Designs. Did I say Blackbird Designs is my favorite, absolute favorite designer? My mom and I were talking yesterday. We just um, 
And what did she say? She said she wanted to live in a Hallmark movie. Um, I want to live in a Blackbird Designs photo shoot. That's where I want to live. Um, I want somebody else to clean it, but I want to live there. Um, I pulled this Blackbird Designs because I haven't showed it before, but also it's stitched on the called for linen, which was probably sea fog, foghorn, probably sea fog. And I wanted to talk about that in a little bit. I would like to do, maybe I have showed this before, because I think I told you I'd like to do this house again as a small, and it's got the buttonhole flowers, buttonhole stitch flowers. I'd also like to do this um, design the honeysuckle and the bird as a long skinny pin keep maybe put the uh, put the stars down here as well I also would like to do um, a long skinny pin keep with either these star motifs or flower motifs or these up here um, I think there's a blackbird designs pin keep pattern that has something like that. So anyways, that's my stitching style through the years, at least 1993 to the present, which is, to be honest, most of my stitching. All right, so now I wanna show you what I finished up um, since I saw you in February or March. I wanted to do Mania and so my plan was to finish as many Mania starts as I could from 2018 before I start Mania 2019. Um, so Stitch Mania, there's a Stitch Mania Facebook group. I'm not part of that group. Um, I'm trying to limit my Facebook um, activity and time. So... Um, I, I tried to cut down on a lot of the groups that I was spending a lot of time on. But um, it's a very large group. It's a very diverse um, group, diverse um, any kind of patterns, all kinds of patterns. I still belong to the sampler group, Sampler Heart, um, because that group, you know, stitches the samplers that, um, that I really enjoy seeing. Um, stitch mania is everything um, and it was started by Katie the stash queen and a gentleman whose um, handle is coffee stitcher and they started the group in 2015 so that in May the first 15 days of May you would do a new start and it's mania M A Y N I A and in the past four years it's expanded there are different variations of the theme. Um, last year, I did 18 new starts for 2018. Um, but this year, I'm going to do a start. I've got a start planned for every day of May and then three extras um, because I really just, I couldn't limit it. So I do, I'm drawn to very large samplers and I have a rotation with nine um rather large pieces and I work three days on each piece so I hit everything once a month um, but I started thinking last year I started there are a lot of small pieces that I like but I don't know where to put them in so I thought well I'll start them for stitch mania and then I'll do a small two-day rotation so I'm hitting three pieces a week for two weeks and then repeat the two weeks over and over and over again um, choosing a new pattern when one gets finished. And I started that in June last year, and it's worked really well. Out of the 18 pieces, I finished 15. One of them I kicked to the curb because it needs, I love the pattern, but the colors I tried and I tried and I couldn't find colors that I liked. It needs to be completely redone when I, when I have a clear head and some distance from it. Two of the, which happened to be the larger pieces that I chose, which should be a lesson to me. Um, I am still doing, so when June comes, I'll be, still be doing those two larger samplers from 2018. I'll put four 2019 
uh, pieces in their slots and I'll do the two day, two week rotation again um, because it works for me. I'm not an organized person. Um, I don't follow rules well. I don't like timelines and time limits and schedules and things like that. But for some reason, the three day rotation has worked for me for a very long time, for years. And it's a lifeline. I don't have to feel guilty about starting a lot of things because I have a system. I know I have a system in place. If I follow the system, I will get to everything. So I don't feel guilty. Um, anyway, so this was a 2018 Mania Start. This had been a free chart from Needleprint. It was on the Needleprint blog. The Needleprint blog is still up, but this chart is no longer available. Um, I started this last year for Mania, and I worked on it, especially since Michelle Farm Girl Stitcher, Laura from Mozart, Modern Mozart, oh, and a whole lot of other people um, are doing a red sampler sal. And there's a hashtag on Instagram, red sampler sal. And there are no time limits, there are no prizes, there are no rules. It's just to share our love for um, red and white samplers uh, and to enable us to find and seek out and purchase and start more red samplers. This is on platinum 40 count, one strand of floss over two threads of linen and it's my very favorite red, which is DMC 498. Um, so I would like to have um, several different reds in the mix, several different backgrounds in the mix. I really like the platinum. It's not a stark white. Um, it's just a slightly aged neutral cream. So that's my first finish for the Red Sampler Sal, which is ongoing forever and ever and ever because we want to have entire walls. This was another small finish. This is the Flag Maker by Not Forgotten Farms. Um, I saw, I mean, I had seen this floating. No, ma'am. I had seen this floating around the internet for years and years, and Priscilla um, shows this in her patriotic displays, which she does May through July. And so I thought, I'd always, I, I think I'd always dreaded it because of the big dress. And what I did, um, it was either my birthday or my sister's birthday, we had a family gathering. And so I had stitched this all the way down to the bottom of the flag, and I left myself, I think this is just eight rows of 646, and that's what I planned to do. I could just sit there and do, well, I don't do the sewing method, but I could just sit there and quickly and mindlessly do the eight rows of 646, and it was fine. I used licorice red for the red. I used freedom for the blue, those are the only two over dyed. I used Freedom. I can't remember which line Freedom is in, but it very closely re resembles blue corn. They're almost my skeins are almost identical. I think blue corn is crescent colors or classic color works. Oops, you see the I satin stitched. I satin stitched the thimble or the floss tag or whatever that is. I copied Priscilla by extending my red thread. I tried to do a loop-de-loo, and then I did my initials. That you've seen. This is Simple Harvest by Blackbird Designs. It's not nearly as pretty in person. My skein of, is it Silken Colors Kelp? was not nearly as pretty as what was shown in the Blackbird Designs book. All that yellow. I don't care for all that yellow. But I think it would be really pretty um, framed and maybe sitting on a bookshelf. I did one over one. Very last thing I did. That had been a mania start. 
This is another Blackbird Designs that was a mania. Um, I think it's called Rose Garden, and it was done with one color of floss, Jakey Brown, which is actually a very pretty brown faded pink. So that was a mania finish. This was a mania finish. I may have showed you this one already. This is Pink Flower by The Work Basket, and it's a free chart on their website. There's a companion piece called The Blue Flower, and I... <clears throat> I had the blue flower ready to go for last year's Stitch Mania, and I didn't get to it. And I've almost thought that I would like to do the blue flower in these same colors. I know they were Victorian motto. I think the darker pink is uh, rum, rum and raisin. The um, I can't remember what the rest of them were, but the brown stem was supposed to be green but I used Dinky Dye's stringy bark and made it brown just for a little more contrast. Um, did I say I'd like to do the pink flower but do the blue flower but do it in the same colors or maybe swap out uh, reverse the dark and the light pinks. All right I think those are all the finishes that I've gotten so that was good um, gravestone flag Faithfulness. No, I did one last night. I finished something last night. Uh, well, maybe we'll get to it. I finished A Little House Needleworks, um, Let Love and Faithfulness Never Leave You, which, as I told you, I had taken from my mom. I said, oh, I really want these colors. Um, Weeping Willow. Um, I don't know. They were colors black coffee they were crescent colors classic color works that looked really good and she said oh you can't unkit something that I've kitted up and I said well you're not going to do it and she said but I've kitted it you can't unkit it so I had to stitch it and I hope I hope I find it because it's really really um it's really pretty it's a really black and blues it just looks very clean it looks very clean all right, so before I show you the Mania, oh, here it is. It's here in the 1,000 year, years bag because I had them both in the car last night. Jerry, would you bring me my little eyeglasses thing? My little, um, I have been stitching in the car again. Um, I used to stitch in the car. I think it, I think once I started on 40 count, I quit stitching in the car just because the light was so variable. It should be right over there because I was, but I've been watching Yankee Creek Stitcher and um, she showed these glasses. Um, it has a light. I don't want to shine it right near. Oh, no, I don't have the batteries in it. Um, it calls for three AAA batteries and it has a light, which you can adjust. And it's a very good light. I can stitch at night in the car while I'm waiting for the girls. But when I'm home, and I can use my, my standing floor light, light, I take the batteries out because three AAA batteries is very heavy um, when it's resting right there. But this was on, what did she say to look up? Magnifying eyeglasses. And she said it'll be like one of the first things that comes up on Amazon. There'll be several variations of them with different prices. One of them is $12.99. It's exactly the same as the higher priced ones. Get the one that's $12.99, and that's exactly what I did. It comes with a little case that has five magnifying glasses in it. One, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, and 3. They snap in and out right here. It comes with legs, regular legs to go over your ear. I, I really liked the legs because then I could just push it up on the top of my head when I wanted to. But I eventually switched to the band here, which just, it pops in and out. And it's really easy. Yeah, see, it just pops in and out. And the legs just snap in there. Um, it was sliding down my nose just slightly. So I went ahead and used the headband. And like I said, I don't put the batteries in. Um, there's obviously a battery cover case when I'm at home. But these have really helped me get back to being able to stitch in the car because this light 
is really powerful and it goes straight down on the fabric and also just having the magnifying glasses I don't need the mag if I have good light I don't need the magnifying glasses to stitch on 40 count but you know what it's nice once I started using them I don't want to go back at all because it's just nice so those on Amazon $12.99 um, those have really helped me stitch in the car. So I stitched this in the car. Oh, I think I'm losing my light. Oh. And it's just really pretty. It's very clean. I don't know why I have all this extra fabric. Um, last year when I did Mania, I think the secret to my success was only doing 18 days. But also, I cut and ironed all my fabric beforehand. And it was just ready to go. I have not done that this year, even though I know what a big help that was last year. So I'll probably either, um, okay. and my light is dying. I think that what I'd like to do is do a pin keep finish, a hard pin keep finish, or um, put it in a, and put it on an easel. And um, for my mom and then I get to keep black coffee weeping willow old blue jeans blue moon and bramble bush which are really nice nice colors all right so I think those are all my mania finishes from last year so the past my plan was to stitch for 30 minutes. I don't have time limit stitching for my big sampler rotation or my two-day rotation. But for Mania, I thought, last year I just did Mania pieces, and I didn't hit my big pieces again probably until July or August. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to stitch 30 minutes a day on my regular three-day rotation pieces and then start a Mania piece. That is not what I did today. I went straight to Mania today. I should have finished my last day of my three-day rotation on um, 1, 000, 1,000 Hills by Plum Street Sampler. I've been working down here. Oh, my good light was helping with my... Uh, I've been working down here, um, and those are... That's the same green down there. Um, I like the splotchy look. I really, I haven't bought any Hands Across the Sea samplers. Um, they're beautiful, but they're, they're I haven't really seen um, one that I had to have, except for Elizabeth Furness, or Furness. Um, and I love the patchworky green at the bottom of that sampler. So that's one that I might have to get. But these colors are really beautiful. And this was on my stitch nine. And I'd really like to finish it this year because it's beautiful and because I want it and because I want to finish my stitch nine and because um, I'm ready to start new things in my big rotation. So I'd like to work on that at some point today. On my birthday, I told you I was going to start something from Kitten Stitcher's second zine. Um, oh, there's a lot of other stuff in here. Cecilia. Wow. Cecilia Smith. Cecilia. Oh, sorry. I don't know who she is. It's in the second zine by Kitten Stitcher. And I, this is what I did on my birthday. I just did the border, which made me very happy. Red and green strawberry border. Um, and it's on, I think this is platinum. I don't think that that is, I really wish I could think of the name. I can't, I don't have a cover page for it. And I seem to have several other, okay. The Celia Smith 1841 sampler. It's mostly a red and green sampler. It has a verse um, from the Psalms, um, something like, she shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework, 
And the virgins, her companions, that follow her shall be brought unto thee. So that was my birthday start. I have put it in my large three-day sampler rotation in place of the heart lives where it loves. And that's still so traumatic. Um, I can't really talk about that yet. Um, I haven't really started anything else except I can't remember if I told you that I started Rosa Christ, or I don't know if it's pronounced Rosa Christ. <clears throat> I'm not going to give you my Appalachian French. Um, so the sampler of my great aunt, Rosa Christ, 1891. This was a sampler that I got from Michelle Wagner. Um, I saw her, I actually saw this on her blog, first of all, and then I saw her finished piece on Sampler Heart. This is actually her great aunt's cross stitch sampler. Um, she's in France, and on her blog, if you look this up, I don't have the name of her blog. I'm sorry, I don't have the name of her blog written down. Um, but if you looked up Rosa Christ, or Rosa Christ, 1891, I think it would come up. Um, on her blog, she has a link to another blog that did a, an in-depth biography of this lady. So I was working on this, and I was as happy as I can be, and I had two gallon-sized um, Ziploc bags full of floss, and I lost one of the bags of floss. And so now I can't ever find the colors that I need. And so I stopped working on it for a while because I'm going to have to go to Joann's again and get all these colors. So these squares down at the bottom, so far I've just done cross stitch squares. This is all DMC. But eventually <clears throat> there will be um, satin stitch patterns and maybe uh, maybe a Smyrna square or a rice stitch. I'm not sure, but she gives directions for all of them. And it's just DMC. Now this is technically not a red sampler sal. It's not a red and white, but it is a French schoolgirl sampler, which was my inspiration, um, which is why I wanted to do red and white samplers because French and Dutch schoolgirls did these red and white samplers. And of course, <clears throat> you know about the Bristol Orphanage samplers. English girls also did them, um, but they are different. Um, but the ones that I fell in love with are the French and Dutch, which seems similar to me. So this is still in the family of the red sampler style. So we have these vining designs across and then two rows of these patchwork squares. So I need to get back to that. I don't have a, a three day spot for it. And I think it's just done on a cream 40 count. But I need to, you know, find my Ziploc bag full of. All right, so now we're getting to mania. <clears throat> I, well, I have some um, stash. My birthday's in March. And so I drool over all the Nashville needlework market releases at the beginning of the month and then I ask for gift certificates. Um, so my mom gave me a gift certificate, my sister, Jerry, um, and my in-laws gave me some um, money and so I, I bought some stash. Some of it I'm going to show you. Some of it's mixed in with the Mania Starts and some of it um, I don't know. Actually, I have a bag that I've been carrying around with me everywhere that has a lot of charts in it that I like to look at. Um, Jerry, would you bring me that Memoria Press bag, that white bag with the red handles? I got Plum Street Samplers, <clears throat> A Gentleman's Daughter. He is a gentleman, and I am a gentleman's daughter. So far, we are equal. And that's a quotation from a, um, thank you, honey from a Jane Austen book, but I don't know which one. I think that's really pretty. I'd like to stitch it exactly like that. 
Um, this I got from Stitchville, USA. A joyous day. I was on Pinterest and I saw a picture of this and I thought, wait a minute, there's a Blackbird design chart I've never seen. And I sent it to Michelle Rudy and I said, what is this? I can't find this anywhere. What is this? And she thought it was a hoax. She said, I, I can't find it anywhere. And then it came up on the Stitchville Facebook page and she sent it to me. I guess at some of the retreats, they're doing elements of this sampler. There's an original sampler that doesn't have the house or the bird. So this is based on the original sampler and um, <clears throat> then some smalls are based on the original sampler. But Stitchville USA had it, may still have it, um, where you could, you could just call and order it. It was $12. I love this pair. Um, some people have said this looks like every other Blackbird design sampler. And my thoughts on that are, well, good, because that's what I like. But also, when I saw it, I thought it didn't look like every other Blackbird design sampler. Now, it has a red house in it. I like red houses. It has this bird that is very reminiscent of the series, the bird series, the browns and grays and blues, 12 chart bird series. And I'm not going to stitch that as a series because Garden Club is doing me in. But I think it's beautiful. So I'm happy to have this little bird on here. But the pear really caught my eye. That's an unusual element. And these squared off flowers down here, which look like they were from the original sampler. I thought, how peculiar, how odd. So I just absolutely love that. Um, so, but that is exclusively, at least for now, at Stitchville USA in um, Minnesota. Um, I bought this. I kind of liked this for a long time, but only when I realized what it says. It says, Fair Daffodils, we weep to see you haste away so soon. I really liked that. Um, I saw it on eBay. And then I thought, well, I'm just going to go and check and see if it's actually available anywhere else. And it was. And I can't remember where I got it from. It wasn't somewhere I've ever ordered from before. But this is something that you should be able to find and just pay the original price for. Um, even though it may be other places for other amounts. So I've just been carrying things around in this little bag that I look at before I go to bed when I'm at my grandparents house or when I'm in the car not all of it's new um, I go to a sampler uh, guild of uh, most of the ladies are in the sampler guild of Georgia they meet once a month to stitch any hawk run hollow piece um, there's a lady there I'm gonna try to get her name and link her online store we have no cross stitch stores in Georgia but she has an online store, and she brought her store to us. This was last month um, in March, so it was not too long after market. Um, and I bought this from her. I don't know that I want to do the whole series. Um, I don't really do bunnies or Santas, but I like that for my mom. I thought my mom actually might want to stitch it. She thought she might actually want to, too. I got a couple of other things. Um, from her but I think they're in other places this was a birthday <clears throat> purchase I like that a lot I told Michelle farm girl stitcher that she ought to make that dookie doo doo and then make these two dogs white for her maremas I got this I have a little black dog I have two little black dogs I actually bought the buttercream linen for this. It's yellow, and that's red, and it looks like, welcome to McDonald's. I, I can't deal with that. I got this, and I've seen, is it Rosalie Colby on Instagram that's stitching this? And it seems like a couple other people are stitching this on Instagram. I'm really looking forward to finishing some three-day rotation pieces and putting this in. This is from Needlework Press, and if you don't follow them on Instagram, you are missing out on some beautiful, beautiful photographs. I got 
Mary Hogg or Mary Hogue, I don't know, from McKenna uh, at 1884 Stitchery. It's everything I love, red and green alphabet, a peacock, it looks a little Scottish, I'm not sure. Um, she does have uh, a write-up about what she's been able to find out about this antique. Um, I just can't remember at the moment. Um, she is stitching this. I think there's a Mary Hogg 1830 Sal, or maybe it's Mary Hogg Sal on Instagram. Of course, you know I got this, and I love everything in it. And I think, I don't even think I picked anything from Mania from this. You know, I, I bought this for the red and white samplers. But the one that I love is not, the one that I love the most is not an antique. It's this one. Um, I don't know if it's the simplicity or if it's the colors. I got this. This is from... Sampler's not forgotten. This looks very detailed. And um, my lamp, my selfie ring has died. So you, you can't really see it. But that is beautifully detailed. I got this. Um, I don't usually go for cute anymore. But I thought this was cute in a sampler sort of way. And I thought that this was an original design. But it's actually... Um, a reproduction, which kind of surprised me because it has, it just has such a modern, a modern vintage style look to it, but it is truly vintage. It is a reproduction. This is again by Needlepoint, Needle, Needlework Press. I got this from Lottie Da. Um, I think this is all DMC. I love just the beautiful colors. I will be filling in the left out stitches. I don't know if this is a reproduction or if this is a modern um, sampler. I think it's a reproduction, but I'll be filling in the lifters. Um, I like this a lot and I wanna do it exactly like that. I toyed with the idea of changing the words and I don't know when I'll stitch it, maybe I will. It reminds me, my mother thinks it's hysterical um, she always brings up the story, apparently William, uh, not William, Winston Churchill was talking to a lady, and she said, Sir, I think it's Winston Churchill, Sir, if you were my husband, I would put poison in your tea. And he said, Madam, if you were my wife, I would drink it. And that's what this makes me, what makes me think of, and I don't know that I could fit all that um, in but that's what I think of every time. This is not new, but I wanted to add this to my collection of the, what were these called? ABC Darien? Yes. It was a Loose Feathers collection. Um, the ABC Darien. And I have this one. I can't remember which one I have. Um, I got the bells on Christmas Day. And, of course, I love this beautiful chart here. Peace and Plenty and Red and Green, those don't say Christmas to me. That sounds good all year long to me. So I would like to do this and keep it out all year long. The original sampler that this was modeled on, it looks like a blue sampler. It's beautiful, too. And someone said that they wished that that chart for the original were included in the book. And I think, if Blackbird's Designs wants to hear what I think, I think it would be great to release a book that has the original charts, well, uh, charts of the original sampler. So, for instance, um, this right here, I would love to have this chart of this original sampler. I love what Blackbird Designs pulls from samplers. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I'll keep buying it. But I also think it would be fun if they just pr produced a book that just had the original samplers that they got their ideas from. I actually think moving around these elements, you might be able to um, stitch that one yourself. But I showed this on Instagram. I bought this on Amazon. Um, I watched today Elizabeth Hurley's 
No, that's not her name. Arkansas Stitcher is what I think of her as because she, um, she's from Arkansas near my in-laws. Um, she got this book, she said, on Kitten Stitcher's website. This is a quilting book, and I've recently come to find out that a lot of the quilting books do have other projects in them. This one has rug hooking in it. It has two or three um, cross-stitch designs. Um, this is the one that she is going to start. And I really like that too. Um, it, I had already made up my mania plans and they are they are tight. They are, it's full to bursting. Um, full as a tick, as my mother doesn't like it when I say. Um, so I don't have a place to add that in. But this is a really nice book. Um, all right, I think, no, 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 that's not one. I also got this. And this is a design that you just can't see well. And it's just so, it's very, very sweet. It's a heartstring samplery. It's a reproduction. And it's very difficult to see, but it has all the right things in it, doesn't it? So I'd really like to start that. Of course, I really want it to come with that little pile of pin, a little pile of pin cushion tomatoes. And this is called Sarah. Boothman, 1845. I think that's it. Nope, there's one more. Nope, there's two more. Well, but that may be a mania. Um, this was new. Ruth Ellen Haystack from Kathy Barrett. I think it was from Market this year. Um, it only has six, in, it calls for six NPI silks, which I thought might be doable, you know, over time to pick up those six silks. But I was really surprised. I thought these were a muted lavender and it's gray. It's pink, gray, and green. And so I I would really like to go to a cross stitch store and look at those MPIs um, because that might be really beautiful, pink, gray, and green. Um, so I don't know. I don't know about that. Okay. So now it's time for mania. So a new start every day. And the idea is that these will be small, reasonable, very small pieces that can be finished up quickly and a new one can go in its spot and on and on and on. Some I chose well, some I chose less wisely. And I, I think you'll be able to see which ones I chose in each category. So today, this morning, I jumped out of bed and I started this one, which is called Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day? And this is the Darling Buds of May. I'm not starting that one right now. That comes from a Shakespeare sonnet. You know, then there's the Hallmark card. How shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art hot. Um, so I started it today, but I'm already frustrated. I, my burlap, let me find the big picture of this. My burlap is not green. Um, Blackbird Design calls for burlap frequently and my black my burlap does not look anything like that it's a it's a goldeny it's a golden color it's definitely gold um, so yesterday I got my very first colors and cotton primitive threads from crazy Annie is that I got them from the place that Steph and Pam talked about and um, it came with, which I don't have, it came with a beautiful, I think it was called hazel green, and it's beautiful. It looks just like that. My pomegranate doesn't look anything like that at all. My pomegranate's pink. I have two or three skeins of it, and it's a rosy pink. So I'm trying to find a red that I like. Licorice red is the second red I've tried this morning. Mm -mm, it's not going to be licorice red. That's coming out. Um, Garden Gate, oh, I wish I had my light. Garden Gate is absolutely beautiful. 
Um, and then this is the hazel green from Color and Cotton, which looks just like the burlap in there. So I'm looking forward um, to working more on that. And yeah. All right, so tomorrow, Tomorrow is Summer School House number one by Brenda Gervais. It will not be stitched one over one. And I had some color consternation with this. I got the Sandcastle and Flatfish. Oh, no, no, no. It's the reds. It's do, Usually it's browns and greens that I have trouble with, but this year it's reds. Either I didn't have or I didn't like the reds that it called for. So I had picked something else out that I can't find. Anyways, I'm doing this like I'm doing everything. One strand of floss over two linen threads, 40 count. Most everything is, last year everything was light mocha. One or two were on platinum. This year, um, it's, oh, maybe that. Light mocha, platinum, and also I got some 40 count navy bean. I really wanted 40 count pearled barley, but I can't find that anywhere, just regular pearled barley. But I really like navy bean. What I got from 123 Stitch does not have a green tint. Um, I ordered some more from them and I hope it also does not have a green tint because it's really, really pretty. All right, so on Friday, I'm going to start Liberty Rose, and that is in this book, which is still available. So the problem here was it's stitched on two fabrics, seamed down the middle, and framed. Well, I, there's no way I'm doing that, right? Okay, so I got the three colors. It just calls for three colors of floss, pink sand, graphite and oak okay so which color do I do it on I don't know what colors they called for but it looks pretty good on platinum it also looks pretty good on this lakeside linens bittersweet and those two look like the picture so it almost Makes me want to do it like the picture, but I don't know who would seam it up for me. Um, so I don't have to worry about that anytime soon, but I need to know which one to start it on, which half to start. So that, that, that'll be, I've got two more days to, um, to worry about that. Um, my daughter, my younger daughter has a ballet recital Saturday and Sunday, so I wanted to pick something that was pretty easy, pretty simple. And this was something that I had kitted up last year and didn't get to. Uh, this is a free pattern. I've had it for a long time. Love Never Fails by The Primitive Hair. And I'm doing it with Ballet Slipper by Victoria Motto Sampler threads and I think this is actually one I got on eBay so it might be something that is repeatable or it might still be there so I thought that would be good I'll go to the ballet recital there's two recitals a day Saturday and Sunday so um, between recitals I will sit there with my headlamp and my mag eyes and I'll I'll just happily happily work on that um, Sunday the 5th, I wanted to do Christmas ornaments on, um, on the Sundays. So, I, I don't have my just cross-stitch book. This is, um, a copy I made. It's Three Crowns by Cherished Stitches, and it is from Just Cross-Stitch Ornament. Mm, I'll have to look that one up. Uh, 2014. And it is, oh, here's a little bitty tiny 
picture. It is two birds surrounded by flowers, and it has um, three crowns. Um, the flowers are red. They look like bells there, but they're red flowers. So I will be doing that for Santa Sunday stitching. The next day, I may be going somewhere exciting. Hold on. Um, this is a free design, so I'm going to show it to you quickly. Um, La Comtesse and La Pointe de Croix. That's my Appalachian French for you. On the edge of the sea. It's a free design. Um, if I don't link it for you, um, go look up this. Uh, um, the design, you'll see the design. If you look that up on Pinterest, it'll come up. So it's on the edge of the sea in French. The second, uh, the, the seventh, I'm going to start Rosie Morn. This is another one from the ABC Darien collection, Loose Feathers ABC Darien collection. That's, uh, maybe larger than it than it should be. The next one I'm very excited about. This is a chart from my mom. This was one of the first sheepish designs I ever remember seeing. It's from 1991. I think I saw that somewhere, that it's from 1991, which is when I graduated from high school and went to college. And it's very 1991. I pulled the threads. Um, they're very pink and blue, 1991 but I'm going to keep them exactly the way they are because I have loved this since I first saw it, which was probably in the 90s, and I've loved it just the way it is. It's charted for 40 count, and this is satin stitch down here. The grass is satin stitch. So I've got the fabric and the threads ready for that. I, I'm pretty happy. I feel like I've chosen a mix of patterns. Um, it's possible all of them look the same to other people. Um, I definitely have things that I prefer. Um, but I'm very happy that I've worked in two Sheepish Design charts, um, that I'm working in my older stash that I've loved for so long. The next one is Chillin' by the Drawn Thread, and you've seen this. Um, Priscilla did this her first year of Floss Tube. She had finished this. Um, I, I'm just not sure yet what linen that's going to be. And for the white and the black, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to use DMC. The only thing that I've pulled is the called for pumpkin color. Um, I'll have to look again and see if that's variegated enough because I may switch it out if it's not. The next one is Land of the Free um, by Little House Needle Works. I have all three of these in this bag. <clears throat> I'd like to eventually do them all three, but this is the one I'd like to start with. The next day is a day where I'd like to do two. Um, I want to do this one for my mom. Neither of us are crazy about that red and white and blue ribbon. Um, but I'd like to start that one for my mom. Her birthday's in July, so it's possible that that would be done in July. And the other one is from this book. It's very small. Um, I showed you this in my last video, this pin keep right here. I'm going to do this one over two, with two strands of floss, either on 32 count or I may even do 28 count. I don't know. Because um, I do want it to be, you know, large enough because I like it so much. So I'd like to start those two Blackbird design pieces. 
um, on Saturday the 11th. Um, it's over there. Um, on the 12th, on the 12th, on that Sunday, I have another ornament from Just Cross Stitch Ornament Edition. I don't know which year this was. I, I brought all my Blackbird Designs books, but I didn't bring my Just Cross Stitch. It's this design right here. I thought I'd do that for my mom. I don't, I'm not into snowmen. Um, that one. Then, oh, it was called Snowy Days. Then, A um, Hundred Ways by Plum Street Samplers. And this was done on, I think, an R&R &R fabric in the pink. And so I had halfway thought that I might do the bittersweet which had that, but it's more of a peachy pink, and I don't think that it would go well with those colors. So I'm still not sure what I'm gonna, I'm gonna do on that one. Um, so then on Wednesday the 14th, this is another one that I got from the online Georgia Stitching Shop. Sorry. I'm going to do this mini a and e sampler and i i liked these there's um a, there's a second edition of these and i liked them and i liked them even more when i realized she told you exactly which frames she used from hobby lobby and exactly how she painted them and went over them with brie wax i'm not sure what that is exactly but they're on 40 count already so i like that and i think this is a Three are on two and a half by three inch wallet sized, and one is a three and a half by five size. So I thought that would be fun to do them and get those frames for them. Then on Thursday, I'm trying to mix up my seasons to make sure I have plenty of um, Halloween, patriotic, and Christmas. I'm not going to use the words. I'm just going to do the rest of the design. Then, this one oh, I was supposed to do last year for Mania. I've done three of Heartstring Samplery's Let Us Be Truly Thankful. And I like them. I really like them. And I really want some of the other ones. The only problem is I started them on 32 count. I think they're a good size on 32 count. I want them to all match so that they can go into the same silver tray. But I just don't want to stitch on 32 count. But I want to get this done because this is the one that I'd like to leave up all summer because I don't think I'm going to do the patriotic one. I think I'm going to do this one and the Christmas slash winter one for December and January, um, but leave this up all summer. So I tell myself I really need to get it done because I've got all these um, over dyed threads locked up in here, kitted up in here, and I need to get them out so that I can use them for other things. So I need to just do that. So that's Truly Thankful May. The next one is one that I had ready to go for last year and just didn't, just didn't do it. This is from Barbara Anna. It's a free design, and I know it's okay to show you free designs, but I don't really like to. Priscilla, um, this may have come from the Star Spangled Stitchers Facebook group. Priscilla, I think, has done both of these, and I'd like to do this long one, and I'm just going to use DMC. Well, I say that now, but I don't know. But I'm going to do that one. The next thing, and I saw Priscilla show this this morning in her um, mania. I want to do Harvest Bird from this design book goodness and plenty. I'd like to do all three of them. Well, I don't know if I want to do that one. I want to do goodness and plenty, and I want to do that little bird. So I'm going to do that. Um, he's brown in the chart, and I'd like to make him black, because I like black birds. The 19th is um, I want to do 
This design by Plum Street Samplers, Good Tidings and Great Joy. And it's done on a green fabric. This is just cross stitch 2012 that looks like this. She's done it on a green fabric. Let's see what color it was named. It was. 40 count vintage tundra Newcastle linen from Lakeside Linens. So I think that I could do it on Water Green by Newcastle. Um, and it looks it looks about the same in the picture. This is actually a, a bit brighter than it's showing up. And so I thought what I'd like to do is I'd like to dunk it in tea, maybe, or in tan writ dye, and get it to be more of this foghorn, sea fog, sea fog color. Um, it's really, really pretty. It's just brighter than that, and I don't want it that bright. But there is one more thing that I want to tell you while I've got this out, so I'm going to pause. Okay, I'm back. I was diving deep for stash diving, that is. I was diving deep to, cause I, I know there are things that I've loved for 20 years and I wanted to get them going. You know, I love Sheepish Designs. Sheepish Designs was two sisters-in-law and then eventually one of the sisters-in-law left Sheepish Designs and became Little by Little. Sometimes it says Little by Little Design Co. I think. Cynthia Daly Bradford. She's designed, seems like in the past couple years, designed Christmas ornaments in the Just Cross Stitch um, edition. This is weird for me, but I really like it. I think that might, the tree, I think the trees would drive me crazy. But the rest of it, I just really like. Um, it's weird though. But I think that it would be beautiful on that sea fog linen, or if I wanted to go the cheaper route, which I probably do, if I took this and dunked it in some tan writ. Um, I really wish you could see this color, but I've showed it before. Um, that would be really, really pretty. What do we think about this? The fishing lady. How weird is that, do you think? Anyway, I wanted to show you that because I've just really been thinking about that one. All right, so that's the green fabric and the Christmas. That one doesn't have a project bag yet. It's just in the magazine. All right, the next one I dived deep again. I have Little by Little and Sheepish Designs in a binder. And then I have Good Housewife, Chart Makers, and all the different Kathy Barrick brands in a design, in a, in a binder. And so I found this one. This is a good huswife that I got a long time ago. She has, it seems like Paulette Stewart stitched these years and years ago when uh, blogging. There's a, there's a companion piece, which is a gentleman. And I'd like to do both of them eventually. I actually like this one better just because I like the flowers better. But I don't know. When I pulled it out, I pulled out the lady. And that's fine. I don't like her flowers as much. But that's okay. I'd like to do both of them. I just don't know about the colors. Um, they're DMC. Well, yeah, they're just DMC. It's 355 is the... Um, so it's an orangey, corally sort of. I mean, it looks red right there, but it's an orangey. But they're 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 pretty small. Um, I'd like to get them both done without a lot of heartburn, choosing colors. So I think I'll just go with the the DMC. Um, this one says, "Hurt not the earth." neither the flowers nor the seeds and the gentleman says hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees and i think they face each other so i'd like to do that one that'll be um the 20th 
The 21st is a sampler from Blackbird Designs Sisters. There are two samplers in here that were done by Sisters. This is H Shields. And then her sister, I don't think there's a very good picture, of her sister is A Shields. And this is the one that I'm going to do first, I think because it was first in the book. I'm going to do it on, I'm branching out here, 40 Count Stars Hollow. It's not very dark, but I've never done anything on R&R &R reproductions before unless that sea fog was. I got this from Jen Stitching Niche. Niche. It's, it's kind of weird for me, and I hope I'm going to be able to do it because the main color is not red. The main color is orange. Um, actually, the main color is Fragrant Cloves. So we'll see if I can stick with that. Ooh, maybe I should keep the fabric with it. Hello. The next one after that, oh, ooh, you can't really stack a bunch of plastic bags. Um, the next one after that I'm excited about, Be Thankful. I saw this one. No, this was, who had this this morning? That might have been Kimberly from the Fat Quarter Shop. Or maybe it was um, Priscilla. Somebody had this on their mania. I just don't know what color. I, I wanted to get the 40 count cocoa that it weeks cocoa, um, but they didn't have a smaller cut. They only had like the half yard size on one, two, three stitch. So I'm not quite sure which color, which 40 count that will go on. The next one is a chart that I also got at the Georgia Hawk Run Hollow stitching group. This is Mary Wynn's Farm, and this is Girls in Blue. Um, that looks like a gun to me. And I don't have a problem with a gun. I don't have a problem with guns, but I have a problem with a gun in a hill. It, that doesn't look right to me. So, um, but I think this is a reproduction, and I just think, I think that's how it, it was. I mean, is that, what is that? Like the state of Florida? I, I don't. So what I think I'd like to do is I think I'd like to shorten the hill, you know, end the border like that, bump up that bunny a little bit, and then just use one variegated green, because um, that just looks really odd to me. I bought Dinky Dye's gum leaves because Nicole Sneedlework did. She used it, I think, in Sarah Redfern. And I think that's what I'd like to do for the dresses. And I think I'd like to make um, one girl's hair uh, golden. So it's my girls. Um, the next one is the other Sheepish Designs. And this is, was done on 40 count. And this alphabet is satin stitched. Um, even on 40 count, sometimes I satin stitch with two threads. I don't know how that's going to work with that much satin stitch. I may just do it with one thread and let it look sparse. Because sometimes you get a slub in the linen or you get really fat threads and it'll look sparse. My only problem here, it's done with um, DMC. And these are not pink flowers actually it's 842 and 841 and I don't I didn't actually have 842 or 841 when I was pulling them but 840 is a very lovely taupe color so I may have to pull um, different pinks and see all these little tiny bitty problems they don't sound like problems but that would de that may derail me Something that small might derail me. Um, this is an old one, Lottie Da, Act Justly. This will be Saturday the 25th. It's planned for Saturday the 25th. I like that one. I've had that one for a very, very long time. I may have gotten that one from my mom. Um, the 26th is another ornament. 
I have two ornaments in this bag, I think just because they're so similar and use similar colors. This is the one that I um, plan on doing, Deck the Halls. I like that couple. Deck the Halls. The next one is also from this book. And I showed you this um, in my last podcast. This down here. Um, I would like to do that on 32 count. I think it's called for 30 count. I'd like to do it on 32 count. The pink is Jakey Brown. And I hope I have enough Jakey Brown to use two threads. Saved over from the Rose Garden. Blackbird Designs. So now that is an appropriate size mania for me. That's what I'm going for for mania. So that's why I said I haven't always chose, chosen wisely. The next one I've had forever and ever. When Georgia did have stitching shops, I asked Terry, um, who owned the stitch store, um, it was near Mall of Georgia, um, to hunt this down for me. I saw this somewhere on the internet and couldn't find it anywhere. And begged her to hunt this for me. So it's a really kind of funky Adam and Eve with a nice verse. Know ye that the Lord is God, it is he that has made us, and we are the people of his pasture. Is that from a psalm, Jerry? 95. All right, so I like it that it's just a little bit, a little bit funky, just a little bit funky. So I've had that one for a very long time. I need to start it. Mm, Wednesday the 29th is a free Plum Street Sampler Give Thanks. This one. Um, I'm not going to do it on the black fabric, even though I think it's beautiful on the black fabric. Then on Thursday, the 30th, I'm going to do this, Polly's, Polly's box, Polly's sewing box, I think they're calling this one. So this, the pen keep, and the little rosebud sachet are all from this book. Then on the last day of May... I want to do this piece, Michelle, Farm Girl Stitcher. You pay attention? Are you in there? Remember, we were going to do these together? I have done this one. I have done this one, probably on 32 or 28 count, full coverage. This is my Haid. Um, and it's, it's beautiful. I just did it in DMC, and it's absolutely lovely. Michelle, Farm Girl Stitcher, and I are going to do these two pieces as one, one long piece. So they're going to look at each other. So he'll be on the, he'll be on the right and she'll be on the left and they'll be looking at each other. And all that is stitched, all that background of clouds is stitched. Um, so I'm going to do that, and it's stitched, it's stitched in DMC, and I love, I know that 927 and maybe 928 are the clouds, and I love those colors. So we're going to do that. I don't have three children. Michelle has three children. Michelle could make one of these into a little boy, probably, um, but I'm just going to do it as it started. On that day, I also want to do another free design by Blackbird Designs. It may have been their first freebie on their blog. It's called Her Sampler. And I want to do that one. I want to get that one started. There's one more chart. So that's 33 charts because there's two days where I want to do two. But this... I mean, how can I pass up that? Um, my younger daughter has, what is it called, Jerry? Letadopteraphobia. Is that right? Letadopteraphobia. The fear of fluttering. 
What? Lepidopter. You can look it up. The fear of fluttering. Um, when she was younger, uh, well, not when she was younger. I mean, yesterday, she, ladybugs, um, butterflies, moths, absolutely terrify her. And I always thought, you know, most of the time when they're terrifying her, it's because I've asked her to go out to the car and get something. And she says, well, I can't go out to the car. I'm trapped on the front porch because there are bees. And I thought, well, she just doesn't want to go. She just doesn't want to go get what I told her to get. Or I can't do my schoolwork at the school table because there's a ladybug. Well, I thought she just didn't want to do her schoolwork. We went to a butterfly house several, like three or four years ago at um, Callaway Gardens. And she was absolutely terrified, rooted to the spot. And so I started to believe, you know, that this was a, she just, a phobia. Um, and it, it is a phobia. There's a name for it. And so I hope this doesn't freak her out. And I have no idea why you needed all that information. But this is just so beautiful. And I saw Amy Loves Toads did a over-dyed, because it calls for NPI silks, and it gives a DMC conversion. Amy Loves Toads on her last um, podcast in the notes has provided her over-dyed cotton conversion. And so I'd really like to do this. I got another piece of, ooh, I got another piece, Old Town Blend. Um, and that's, that's dark for me. I'd kind of like to do this on that. So I don't want to do the initial. I don't feel any need to do any initials. I think it looks pretty on its own. But I'd like to stick that somewhere. Um, Maybe a day where not a lot is going on. Um, I really like to do that as my 34th mania piece. So that is all I have. I do. I will show you really quickly the two carryovers from 2018. I feel terrible that I'm still working on this one that I borrowed the chart from Laureate Mischievous Stitches. I got so bogged down somewhere and I've messed up somewhere but I'm just going ahead it's beautiful I want it um, so that one will continue to be worked on as one of my six two-day two-week rotations the other one that will be carrying over I have to show this one to my mom and see what she says I wanted to do this for my dad remember when you can get Cricket collections and um, birds of a feather and Lottie Dawes at Hobby Lobby. Michelle remembers. This is really pretty. Um, I've read this to you before. Profit and Fan Club, Counselor on Call, Childhood Foundation, Guardian of Truth, Character Model, Champion of Dreams. This is really mushy for me and my dad. So I need to show it to my mom before I go further and make sure that it's just not too mushy. I changed this color to a different silken threads and it just looks a little fruity. It just looks like, you know, Fruit Loops. It looks like Fruit Loops. I think that this dark green and brown acorn butt border will tone it down. And I think I, I need to get some of that on there before I make a decision. I, I didn't think this looked like Fruit Loops. I, mean, it, it, I thought it looked staid and but it just kind of does look like it just the purple is jumping out at me and I don't associate purple with my father but I think with the acorns it'll tone it down some but I need to show it to my mom before I I mean I worked on it last time it came up um, so those will carry over and then that's my mania so I tried to pick small things, um, but sometimes I got carried away. Um, I've got them written down in pencil on the days when I think I can do them. I've taken into account a trip to the Georgia coast. I think I've taken account, you know, into the recital. I think I have doable ones for the recital weekend. Um, but who knows what will happen because 
you know, this lady, she looks like she has a mind of her own, doesn't she? You never know where she's going to pop up. Um, now, if I do get derailed one day because I can't find the exact right floss color or I have plenty, plenty, plenty of other things that I kitted up last year that I didn't get to. This, I love this. Shepherd's Bush isn't usually my style, um, but I love the hem, uh, the carol, the holly and the ivy. Um, and I love the colors, and I have the colors. I'm using the DMC greens, but I got the called for over dyed pinks. That one has fabric that is cut and ironed from last year, ready to go. Um, Hello Winter has fabric and floss ready to go if they need to, to jump in. and um, You've seen Baby It's Cold Outside. It has fabric and floss. I've been looking for that picnic basket. It has fabric and floss ready to go. It's um, I'm going to do it on the other half of the... Um, Country Mocha that I did Sally Spencer on. Um, I bought this piece of 40 count Aztec red by Weeks. And now I don't know what I want to do with it. Because in the 2006, this was in my mania. In the 2006 Christmas, just cross stitch. There are two really pretty. Yes, it did interrupt my thing. It's, um, but this is a lighter red and it has a dark red roof. And so I don't know how to make that. I won't know how I could make that work. I could make the roof green, you know, whatever green is in this mistletoe border. Um, I could do that. There's also another, um, I really, really liked it when Just Cross Stitch had all the pictures in front. So I could just flip through the pictures and drool over them. This is by Wild Heart Designs Snowflake Heart. Um, and again, that red is, is lighter, or it photographs lighter. Um... So I think I can do both of them on this red if I choose to. So those are in a bag, ready to go. I just need to get some, you know, stick some white floss in there. Um, I am building up my collection of NPIs for Sarah Pudsey. So if she had to step into the breach, she could. Um, and I'm sure there's countless other little things. So I should be able, I should be good to go. I should be good to go. So everybody who is starting mania, good luck. Everyone who is just standing back, staying out of it, but interested to watch, have fun, enjoy. I think that I'll be posting a picture every day of what I did start, um, but I probably well, you know I won't be back, um, probably in May. Um, maybe uh, towards the end of June, you know, I'll be able to show you some progress on the pieces that I um, have been concentrating on. So until I see you again, have a good May, whether you're a spectator or you're in the game, um, and I will see you later this summer. Bye-bye.